Great to have you with us. We begin with breaking news tonight on News Nation. Just moments ago, the Food and Drug Administration granting emergency approval to Moderna's coronavirus vaccine, giving our nation a second critical tool to protect Americans against infection. It comes at a critical time in the fight against the virus, with the U.S. regularly recording more than 3,000 deaths, and that is a day. The federal government has purchased 200 million doses of the Moderna vaccine, and the U.S. is the first country to approve it for emergency use. In a tweet, FDA Commissioner Stephen Hahn says, quote, with the availability of two vaccines now for the prevention of COVID-19, the FDA has taken another crucial step in the fight against this global pandemic that is causing vast numbers of hospitalizations and deaths in the United States each day, end quote. Tonight, we are joined by Dr. Joseph Aaron. He's a professor of medicine at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, my alma mater, sir. And he leads the division. Right. Right. Go Heels. <laughs> That's right, not Duke, Chapel Hill, man. Division of Infectious Diseases. He served as one of the investigators in the Moderna vaccine trial. Thanks so much, doctor, for being here. We certainly appreciated this role of investigator. What exactly was your role as this trial moved along? Well, I had to meet the patients, help consent them, examine them, talk to them about the vaccine, then follow up with them, see how they responded, what side effects they had. It was really interesting, really important to um, meet with these people that volunteered to be on a trial, blinded trial, placebo or active vaccine, and contribute to what we know now, which is really incredible. What do you think it means that now a second vaccine uh, is going to hit the market soon as we continue to see these COVID numbers surge across the country. Now we have uh, another vaccine about to take hold. I, I think it's huge. That you mentioned uh, 200 million doses. We need that many doses. We have to literally try to vaccinate everybody in this country. And, you know, it, it's a rollout. It takes time. It takes organization. But both vaccines, both the Pfizer and Moderna, are highly effective. Um, and they are... Gear, they protect old people, young people. Uh, we're, we're incredibly excited about this. We need to get people kind of engaged in this vaccine. We have to get people interested in receiving the vaccine. I, I think it'll make a huge difference. And 200 million doses, that's 100 million people. So still less than half the population, but a lot of people. That's critically important. And is there anyone excluded from the Moderna trial? I mean, is there any outstanding data in terms of for whom this will work and for whom it may not? Sure. Or is this, is this one dose fits all? Yeah, it's a great question. So first of all, it's two doses. It's really important to get both doses. They're separated by a month. Um, it hasn't been studied in certain groups, um, certain people with immune deficiencies, pregnant women haven't been studied, children haven't been studied, but basically it looks very safe um, the EUA for Moderna, uh, for the Pfizer vaccine allows pregnant women, and I uh, suspect when we read all the detail on the Moderna, it will allow pregnant women. We need more data in younger people. Uh, I don't think there's any risk to people that have immune deficiency. We don't yet know how well it will work in that group, uh, but, but we'll get there. And, and it's a safe vaccine. It's an effective vaccine. And I, I would certainly recommend it uh, strongly. Um, to my family, to my friends, uh, uh, across the board. Doctor, can you talk a little bit about some of the side effects to the vaccine? Typically with vaccines, we do see some things accompany the shot. Uh, can you give people an idea of what they can expect once they do get it? Yeah, I, I, that's a great question. Um, yeah, first of all, the, the first shot, and I got my Pfizer shot yesterday, um, your arm's sore. I, I think everybody will get kind of a sore arm. There, there is... Um, a component in the vaccine that kind of stimulates the immune system. So um, you, you expect some soreness. The second shot, uh, which for the Pfizer vaccine, 21 days later, Moderna, 28 days later, there you can see more of a reaction because your, bo your body has built up some immune reaction already, some, some fight against the virus. So some people, not everybody, for a day might feel feverish, achy, muscle aches, fatigue, it's pretty short-lived, right? It lasts for about a day or two days. It doesn't last a long time, but you, you can feel um, a little bit flu-like, so people could get confused. Rarely, and, and uh, rarely, people can have an allergic reaction. 
We saw that in the, in the United Kingdom, in the UK, in England. But, but they vaccinated now hundreds and thousands of people in, in England. And we, we heard about those first two. And, and we can deal with that. We know how to deal with allergy. Um, but after the second shot, there is, you might feel bad for a day. I think that's probably the most common thing that will happen. Doctor, you say it's safe and effective. A lot of people still, though, do have questions about it, especially pregnant women, because there really hasn't been much data on that aspect of it. Talk a little bit about this messenger RNA that we hear about, how that works, and how it differs from, say, the flu. Sure. So messenger RNA, this is really clever. The vaccine, instead of putting in a protein or part of the virus or a killed part of the virus like the the uh, flu vaccine, which is an inactivated virus, um, it actually just sends in the blueprint. And then your cells in your body act as the machines that take this blueprint and make the virus protein. And then the body sees that protein uh, in a cell and coming out of a cell. So the immune system is really used to seeing viruses like that, right? Because viruses infect cells. They, they have to infect the cell. So this protein coming out of a cell is very immunogenic. Um, and that message, that blueprint, is quite, kind of quickly destroyed once the protein is made. So it really is um, a very clever way to make a, a vaccine. And we don't anticipate long-term side effects. Obviously, we, we want it to be safe. We don't know how long the uh, immunity will last. I think, to me, that's the biggest open question. Is this going to last for three months, six months, five years? Open question. But it's a very clever, it's like the message, the blueprint is being given as the vaccine, the protein is made, the body responds, uh, and then that blueprint is destroyed. So it's very efficient. That durability point you just made in terms of how long you'll have immunity, that is so critical to this, whether critical. it's three months, a year, 10 years, the rest of your life, when will we know how the length of immunity post-vaccine? Yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll, we have to wait to those first volunteers. And again, I want to really comment on the volunteers and give them credit, because they volunteered when we were not sure, right? So when those volunteers get out six months, a year, remember the, 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 vaccina the vaccination started this summer, August, September, for the Pfizer and Moderna. So when we get out to a year, we, we will start to learn. Um, but the people who got placebo, the people on the study that, that didn't get the active vaccine, we're going to start vaccinating those people. I, I think there's been a lot of discussion about what's ethical, what's not. We're going to start vaccinating those people because they volunteered. So we'll learn, but it's going to take time. It, it, I don't think we're going to know the durability uh, till at least a year from now. So, wow. so 18 months from when we started. Doctor, uh, not much has been made, but I know that people, as they go to get this vaccine, may be curious which of the vaccines they're going to be getting. Is it the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine? Uh, will they have a choice? Should they be asking that question? And ultimately, will we learn differences between the two as more people get them? You guys ask terrific questions, I, I got to <laughs> say. You really, you really are fantastic. Um, the message, that blueprint, that mRNA, is exactly the same between the two, two uh, vaccines. What's different is what kind of holds the vaccine together. We call them excipients. It's kind of what holds the vaccine together. The Pfizer vaccine requires extremely cold temperatures to be stored and shipped, while the Moderna doesn't require that depth of cold. Um, so I think what people are going to find is if you're getting it in the community, so at a, at a pharmacy, at your clinicians, at the uh, county health department, you're probably going to be offered the Moderna vaccine. If you're getting it at a medical center like I did, where we can store things at minus 70 degrees centigrade, that's really cold. Um, uh, I got the, the Pfizer vaccine. As best I can tell, looking at the data very carefully, I don't think there's a difference. They're both right around 95%. Um, again, it's the same message that, that's being, uh, the same blueprint that goes into your body. I, I, don't, I don't think it should matter. When we start vaccinating, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Maybe we'll learn something different. But if you want my opinion, I don't think so.
I think they're very, very similar. So another concern we hear from, from people, doctor, and I'm, I'm asking you these questions because I want you to try to put people's minds at ease. One of their sure. concerns is how quickly this came to pass, which is really amazing how, how science and the researchers in the labs were able to do this. But was this also a matter of the fact that these companies had the ability with extra financial support to try several different ideas and then we hit on a couple? Why should they not worry about how quickly this came to pass? Yeah, it's very fast, and I, I agree with you. And I, 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 I get calls from my patients. Some of them are worried. Some are saying, "Well, I'm going to wait, you know, two or three months and see." I, you know, I, I think that number one, there was a lot of money put behind this, a lot of effort. The two studies together have vaccinated over 70,000 70, 70, people, right? Um, many vaccine studies require many fewer people and have to be followed for a long, longer time. I'm very convinced that the short-term safety of these vaccines is excellent. Uh, and just as we know, the short-term um, uh, efficacy, the, their ability to protect us is excellent. And based on what I know about the biology, how the vaccine was made, I would predict that the long-term safety is going to be very good. I understand people's uh, reluctance and worry. Like if someone talks to me about a hedge fund, I get really nervous because I don't know anything about a hedge fund. <laughs> but but I know about vaccines, right? And and um, I, I do think we we do have to trust science at some level. Um, and uh, I get that that people who aren't, you know, um, really sophisticated in medicine um, might have concerns. And I do think in this case, it is so much the right thing to do. I I, I feel passionately about this. Um, and I, but I, I do think, you know, people who have, um, you know, have had issues with the medical system, the healthcare system, there's mistrust out there. I get that. I understand it. Um, and, but we'll, we're, we're vaccinating people. People are lining up. Um, and I think we'll learn, but I think based on 70,000 people now, um, I, I think it's, it's safe in the short term and based on the biology, I think it's going to be very safe in the long term. The key question is durability, which you guys have hit on. And, and we won't know until, until some time passes. And doctor, you're doing very well. We're going to move on to the lightning round. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a practical guy, so I have two questions. If sure. you get the vaccine, Moderna or Pfizer, does that mean you can't get COVID-19? Or if you do get it, the symptoms will be a lot less severe? And number two, in terms of still being infectious, Oh, if boy. you get the vaccine, meaning I got the vaccine, but can I still pass it on to someone else who does not have it? Yeah, that, these are really great questions. So, so the, the first question is easiest to answer, severe disease. And with both vaccines, both the Moderna and the Pfizer, um, there, was, there were no episodes of severe disease in the people that got vaccinated. Um, for the, for can I get symptomatic disease? Could I get sick but not really sick? Um, it's about 95%, right? And most of those infections occurred, you know, within, you know, the first month, two months or so of getting the vaccine. So it's not perfect. There's no question about it. it's not perfect, but it's very, very good. The third question which you asked is, could I still get infected and still be infectious? Meaning, um, does it actually protect protect against infection. I know, we know it protects against becoming symptomatic and severe disease. And the, the basic answer there is we don't know. Um, there's some preliminary data from Moderna that suggests it does protect against asymptomatic infection, but we don't know yet. We honestly don't know. That's why we feel like people should continue to wear masks. Um, I, I think things will loosen up, but, but we wanna protect each other, right? That's so important. Um, uh, so the, your third question, does this prevent infection and infectiousness? The honest answer is we don't know. What do I believe? I think it's very likely, but we, we honestly don't know. And, and that's a great question. And that is a critical I don't know because that will determine how long we still deal with masks Not, and close restaurants and no, six feet apart until we really get back to normal 
is largely right. dependent upon scientists finding out the answers to those questions. And right now, it's just a big question mark to right. summarize it's your question. It's a question mark. Like I said, there's some preliminary data, but we, we honestly don't know. There's some studies being developed. But in order to do that, right, you, you really have to not only vaccinate someone, but then monitor them very, very carefully. You, you have to, um, you know, see them several, maybe even several times a week or at least once a week to see if they're becoming, and that's hard to do with 70,000 people. Um, it's a challenge. So um, we will learn over time. I, I think we'll learn this, um, but it's going to take additional uh, study. Um, and we'll also see, we'll learn, it, does transmission go down when enough people uh, get vaccinated? I think the bigger challenge is we know there have been surveys, you know, maybe 50% of the people in the country, and, and in some areas, even more than that, are say they won't get the vaccine. Um, and, and that's a bigger risk in, How in my how critical is it that healthcare providers, organizations are communicating with one another through this process? As you said, we're trying to learn more about the effectiveness of the vaccine. And I think further than that, what can the American public do to communicate what they are experiencing as the months draw on? Yeah, I, that, that, that's great. That, so I think that we have to talk to each other as healthcare workers. We have to learn from each other. Um, we have to make sure that if we see side effects or problems, they're reported. If we learn that people who get vaccinated become infected, we have to um, learn, uh, is their virus level higher? You know, we can measure how much virus people are, are shedding in their nasal and oral secretion, so we can learn that. Um, I think people can help us um, by reporting symptoms. If, if something's different or do it doesn't seem right after a vaccination, don't be afraid to, to let your uh, care provider, your doctor, your, your um, nurse practitioner, let, let them know um, if, if, there's a, if there's a problem. And the CDC is trying to gather data, which is great. Big organizations like the VA, some of our big healthcare organizations like Kaiser and others really can kind of pull this data together and, and we'll learn. Um, but yeah, we, we do have to be in this together. Um, uh, we have to share information. We have to talk to people at Duke. It's we have to. We can't help it. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but then it's true. We 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 actually collaborated with the people at Duke. Um, doctors working on the vaccine at Duke actually came to UNC to join our study. That's how important it was to them. Mm. They couldn't get vaccinated in their own study. They, they had to come over to UNC. So it really, um, we are working together. Um, so if Duke and UNC can work together, just about anybody. Just not on game day. <laughs> yeah, not right, on not, game definitely day. not on game day. Yeah. So, so doctor, we're losing 3,000 people a day still, and I know there are some variables in this, but when do you think we can point to the situation and the numbers and say because of the vaccine, we're seeing improvements and we're down to, I say down to, but we're down to 1,000 people a day dying? Um, yeah, that, that uh, you know, uh, I think... Behavior has to come first. We, we have to really mask up. We, we, we really have to keep our distance. We wear a mask to protect others, right? That, that's why we wear a mask. Um, uh, I think um, we really, people getting, it's the cold weather, people are shut indoors, the dry air, the virus floats around more in the, in the dry air. Uh, we're, we're not outside. Uh, so I think that it's gonna be late springtime Maybe before we get to that number that you you were talking about, a mm. thousand people. Hey, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Right. Yes. Um, it, it really. It we're. I I, I don't want to be pessimistic because I really want people to go out and, and get the vaccine, but um, I think it's going to be a, a tough two, three, four months. It, if you think about it, you, you know we want to vaccinate millions of people. That takes a lot of effort. Yesterday I learned at, at our medical center. Uh, we vaccinated 460 people. That that's fantastic, but just to get our healthcare workers, we have to vaccinate about 10,000 people. Hmm. So that's you know that's going to take 20 days. Um, and and so you you think about it, it it's going to take time. Um, Doctor, so. to that exact point, what I've heard is that 70 to 75 percent of of the population needs to get vaccinated for this to be truly effective and get to that herd immunity. America is living through an interesting time right now. You know, 75% of this country may not agree the sky is blue uh, right, right now. So between 
that dynamic in terms of the high number of necessary for vaccinations, plus a portion of the country not believing or not wanting to wear the mask, does that diminish your optimism at all? Or at the very least, does it lengthen the fairly dark road we're traveling? Yeah, that's why I, I, I talked about kind of late spring and summer. Um, I, I think if we could get every, you know, 80, 75 percent, 80 percent of people vaccinated in the next, um, you know, two months, I think it'd be different. We do know it's really important that even after the first shot, now everybody should get two shots, but seven days after the first shot, uh, the protection starts. It's very, very clear, both for Moderna and Pfizer. The, the graphs are amazing. Right, they start to diverge right at about seven days. Now it's most effective after the second shot, but it 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 works. Uh, you know, I'm I'm counting the days. I'm 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 now you know six days from eighty uh, percent protection. So, um, but yeah, I, I think um, hopefully we'll, we'll get leadership across the board. You know, um, independent of political party. Maybe just like we asked, you know, asked our professional athletes and other people to help us get out the vote, let's ask um, our celebrities, people like you, 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 you famous people, um, to, <laughs> to, to get people out to be vaccinated. That, that would be terrific. Well, doctor, thank you so much for being with us, for giving us so much of your time tonight and for all of your insight. And a joke that we'll, that only the two of us may get and our Carolina viewers, next time I'm in Chapel Hill, I've liked you so much, I owe you a blue cup and he's not. You know yeah, exactly absolutely. what that means. Together. Together we'll be there. Thank you so much. Thanks, doctor. Thank